Hello friends, this is Ralph and today I'm back with another beginner tutorial for the Behringer 2600 synthesizer. The topic of today's video is the VCF, the voltage controlled filter. For those of you who are new to my YouTube channel, please be informed that I create Berlin School of Electronic Music and IDM. Moreover, I make tutorials about synthesizers. So if you are interested in the ARP 2600, the Behringer 2600 or 2600 clones, then you have come to the right place. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out some of my videos. Also, I ask you to kindly watch this video until the end because I have further information about my videos and tutorials. So without further ado, let's jump into today's tutorial explaining the voltage controlled filter of the Behringer 2600. All right, we are looking here at the Behringer 2600 Grey Mini which is identical to the standard Behringer 2600. The difference is that the Grey Mini has a spring reverb on board, whereas the standard Behringer 2600 has a digital reverb. Moreover, obviously, the color of the front panel is different. So, as I said before, this is a beginner tutorial for the 2600 synthesizer and in today's episode we talk about the filter. The voltage controlled filter resonator VCF. So when you look at the top section here you notice that the layout is similar to the VCO section. We have a slider for the initial filter frequency. On other synthesizers, this is called cutoff frequency. So the upper slider here is a wide range and then here fine tune is a more narrow range for the filter frequency. And then here this slider is the resonance. When you turn the slider all the way to the right, you can put the filter into self oscillating mode and thereby you can create a sound. A sine wave form is then output by the VCF. But we will talk about that in a moment. So then here you have a mode switch. You can select between the 4012 filter mode and the 4072 filter mode. When the original ARP 2600 was originally released back in 1971, ARP was using a letter filter design which was similar to Moog's filter design. So eventually they ran into some issues with Moog and they were forced to abandon the letter filter design and they had to use their own filter design instead which is now the 4072 filter mode. But uh, for the moment we stick with the 4012 filter mode. Then here you have a filter output and you can route the filter output to any other section here of the synthesizer. And then let's move on here to the inputs of the filter. You have five audio inputs and then over here you have three control inputs with which you can control the frequency of the filter. But let's move on here now to the audio inputs. But before we dive into it, let me tell you how we route the signal through the synthesizer. As I said before, it's a beginner tutorial and I just want to make sure that beginners get the settings right here on the synthesizer. Make sure you turn initial gain all the way down, so move this slider downward. Then in the voltage controlled amplifier section, the VCA, you make sure that the VCF slider is all the way up. And then here in the control section of the VCA, make sure you put the 
AR envelope slider all the way up. And then in the final mixer section here, you move the VCA slider into the upper third. Okay, let's move back now to the um, audio inputs of the filter. We have here the ring modulator. Ah, I forgot to tell you one important thing. I have connected an Aturia keystep to the Behringer 2600 Grey Mini via MIDI. Okay, back to the audio inputs here. We have the ring modulator input. Okay, then we have VCO number one. Then we have VCO number two. And then we have VCO number three. And finally we have the noise generator. So when we bring in some reverb and play with the frequency of the filter, you can create this classic wind sound. Okay, now we come here to the control section of the VCF. For this, the first thing here is keyboard CV. For this, we turn now the VCF into self-oscillating mode. We move the resonance slider all the way to the right. So what you are hearing right now is a pure sine wave. When I play some keys on the keyboard, nothing is happening. But when I turn the keyboard CV slider upward, Then the VCF is playing some notes. So here on the AR, let's put a little bit longer attack. So when I bring in the reverb again, okay, this is a pure sine wave. Okay. Then here we have the ADSR control. Here I have created an ADSR shape. So you can hear the ADSR now controlling the frequency of the filter. Also with um, re some reverb. Right. And then finally here we have the pre-wire connection, the VCO number two input. Mm. So please note that VCO number two at the moment is in audio range mode. And when we use the audio, audio range mode of VCO number two, to modulate the VCF, we can create some very interesting sounds. Also bringing in the reverb. Okay, we can also turn the VCO number two into low frequency mode. So you can hear now that VCO number two is acting like a normal LFO. Okay, let me tell you that all these connections, pre-wire connections here, can be overridden by patch cables. That's the beauty of the 2600 synthesizers. You can start with a synthesizer without any cables, but if you wish, you can make reconnections. So, 
let us move now to something else. I want to show you how I can use just the filter to create some overdrive feedback sound. So for this we take the VCOs back into so and now we bring VCO number two back into audio range. And tune it again. So I can bring in the VADSR to control the frequency of the filter. To create some bass sound. But as I said, I want to use now the filter output to create some overdrive feedback sound. So for this, we take here the VCF output and plug the cable. We feed the filter signal back into its own mi mixer section. So we take the ring modulator input slot and now we bring up the slider. So the difference is very subtle. You can hear that the that the sound is getting a little bit more saturated and thicker and aggressive. We can also change the filter mode. Okay, let's stick with 4072 mode for the time being. And um, now that VCO number two is in audio range again, let's use the audio range to modulate the frequency of the VCF. So we ta also use the pre-wire connection here. Bring in the filter. Sorry, uh, the reverb. So, what we are going to do now, instead of VCO number two modulating the VCF we take the LFO modulating the VCF. So we take here on the LFO the sine wave output and plug it here into the VCO slot of the control section of the filter. The reason why I'm using the LFO now is because I don't want to switch the VCO number 2 into low frequency range because I want to use the VCO number 2 as a sound source. So for this now I'm using the LFO to modulate the frequency of the filter. <laughs> Spring reverb. Thank you. 
Okay, that was the VCF of the Behringer 2600 in a nutshell. On my YouTube channel, you find a lot of tutorials for the 2600 synthesizer. Some tutorials cover more advanced topics and some of my videos are geared towards absolute beginners. I have set up a playlist for all these beginner videos and my aim is to cover every single module of the 2600 synthesizer. I have put that playlist into the description box of today's video and also up here. Make sure you please subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out this playlist on a regular basis. And now look at this. More than 80% of people who are watching my videos are not subscribed to my YouTube channel. So come on, please support me, hit that subscribe button and also activate the bell. And if you wish, you may also follow me on Instagram and Twitter. All right, that's it for today. I hope I see you again in my next video. Until then, take care, stay safe, peace.